another Nazi target hit, another blow for freedom and justice. Since October 16, 1940, millions of American men have joined the armed forces to defend our country and our democratic way of life. They are men from all walks of life, salesmen, white collar workers, trained factory workers, skilled mechanics. These trained men have been in great demand by the armed forces. As a result, vast inroads have been made on male personnel available for the production of essential war materials. Such production must be kept at its peak. It is the foundation on which the Allies must build the offense which will bring us victory. Here in this modern supercharger plant, the manpower shortage is being solved by training women to do almost the entire job. Waitresses, sales girls, housewives, all have willingly taken their places in national defense. But can these women satisfy America's critical need for skilled labor in industry? Are they fulfilling the demands of wartime production? Well, let's find out. Although large numbers of women apply for work each day, all applicants are given personal interviews. Aptitude, physical condition, and experience are all taken into consideration. Girls with some machine shop training are given preference, but those without any factory experience are being employed by the hundreds. They are of all ages and all types. Many are single, and many have husbands in the service. Before starting the new job, time is spent in the lecture room, hearing safety and conduct rules, and looking at educational motion pictures, which help to introduce these novice workers into the spirit and feeling of wartime production work. Each girl is outfitted with a coverall uniform, wiping cloths, a cap, hairnet, safety goggles, and towels. These are provided free of cost and the laundry is done without charge. Outfitted for their training programs, these girls are now ready to tackle the work of producing weapons and equipment essential to our armed forces. Don't forget, most of them have never seen the inside of a manufacturing plant. Here one girl is teaching another how to operate a Jones and Lampson turret lathe. This is one of the most interesting discoveries made in training women they actually learn better from other girls already trained rather than from men instructors. Surprising? Not at all when you think of it. So far, the machine shop has been a man's world. At first, the new girl is a little frightened. But when she sees another girl get her hands dirty, sees her actually doing the job easily and efficiently, she learns faster and with greater self-confidence. Four ladies help in the training and supervision of women employees. They are chosen for their ability and leadership and are a vitally important cog in the instruction and production program. Where operators learn but one or two machines, four ladies must be able to set up and handle at least five different machines or operations. They must sharpen and set up tools, make test operations, and keep machines operating at top efficiency for less experienced workers. Production starts with incoming materials. Here in the raw stock receiving room, under the inspiration of the American flag, women check over incoming material and die mark stock for identification. Men do the heavy lifting, but all stenciling, light stacking, and record keeping is done by women. Girls perform the first preliminary inspection of raw stock, marking possible flaws. This operation catches many pieces of inferior material that might otherwise go on through to machining. Women make exceptionally efficient laboratory technicians. In this laboratory, they operate sensitive equipment, work with chemicals, do machining of parts. Often, they must maintain accuracies as close as one ten thousandth of an inch. When you make a piece of equipment as important and as intricate as a turbo supercharger, you've got to be sure every bit of material you use is up to standard. You've got to be sure the workmanship is up to standard, too. The lives of our airmen depend on it. Other girls operate all types of machines. The girl you see here is making a bar breaking test. Pieces chosen at random from every lot of raw stock received are tested in every conceivable way. The work is followed through the shop and further tests are made at every step. Not a single flaw nor a single piece of inferior material or workmanship is permitted to get through to a finished unit. This is technical work, highly exacting, 
but the technician in charge of this laboratory states that these women are as good and even better than many men he has employed. What kind of technical training is required of these laboratory workers? No previous training. Not one of these girls has ever been inside a laboratory before she came here. Only a few had ever worked on machinery. Machining. That's the big worry of plant managers today. Let's take a look at the machining jobs these girls are doing. Let's start with this big Natco multiple drill. Emily had the advantage of about a year's experience operating a punch press in another plant before taking this job. It took her only a few days to learn how to operate this Natco. Although this is a big, tough machine, just watch the way Emily, the operator, handles it. Puts it through its paces, lifting the part to be drilled, turning heavy wheels, moving along with the work. That's just the physical part of this job. It takes a lot of skill, too. Note that she has two different sets of drills, a rather complicated and difficult set of operations. This work gives you a good idea of what a girl can do. It is estimated that before the end of 1943, industry will hire and train more than five million additional women for production jobs like this. Here girls are doing a whole series of actions on a battery of Monarch blades. Most of the girls in this plant are already on piecework. The rest are going on piecework as fast as studies can be completed. Operating this Cincinnati vertical miller is not an easy job. When it begins to dig in, the chips fly and there's plenty of screech and howl. But it doesn't frighten this girl. She has several friends in the service, and she knows there's a lot more screech and howl on the battle front, and metal more dangerous than flying chips. Extremely close accuracy is required in all of these operations. Here's another complicated series, requiring the use of two Leland Gifford drills and a tapping machine. Having a girl perform several operations in a series helps to prevent the fatigue that results from monotony of doing just one operation. This girl used to be a dentist assistant. Here she is still doing grinding work, but not quite the same kind. Operating this Madison surface grinder requires the utmost in accuracy. In fact, this grinding operation on some materials must be held to tolerances as close as two-tenths of one-thousandth of an inch. The finest of gauges and micrometers are required to maintain these standards. Type of grinder, also requiring extreme accuracy and skill. Shafts put through this machine must be held to tolerances of less than half a thousandth of an inch. That's exacting work. It requires patience and precision, two qualities women workers have to a high degree. There are 18 drills on this big Natco whole steel machine, and one girl handles the whole operation. You will notice she drills two units at a time, one side of one and the other side of the second unit, thus saving time that would be required to do each side separately. Veronica was a housewife and waitress before tackling this work. She changed because she felt she wanted to play a more important part in the war effort. They call this the machine with the Hawaiian dancer motion. It's used to clean out a tricky V-shaped section. Or take Irene, who runs this Excello thread grinder. She used to work in a dime store. Yet it took only three weeks of training to get her ready for this job. And it's just the sort of job they said women were not fitted to do. There are a lot of jobs in this plant that have never before been handled except by skilled men operators. Here's another job they said was too tough for a woman. It's operating a Bryant hole grinder. Plant engineers invariably are surprised at the skill of these girls. That's right, Dolores. Show us how accurately you hold to the specifications. After one day's instruction, the girl you see here went to work on this Axelson lathe. It's actually only the second day she has been on the job, and yet the foreman in charge says she is doing first rate. The only machine she ever worked before was a sewing machine. And the girl who operates this brown and sharp milling machine is going to marry an Air Force's man at Kelly Field. And when he goes across, she's coming back to this machine again. That's the kind of help the war spirit these girls possess. There are several score milling machines of this type in the plant, all operated by women and all producing top capacity. 
Margaret has been running this punch press for two months. It punches two holes and forms two angles in one operation. Her previous experience includes work on machines in a shoe factory. She is taking instructions on how to operate the biggest hydraulic press in the plant. It takes six months experience before the government will certify a worker for this Magnaflux machine. Using a magnetization process, scratches or imperfections in the metal, unseen by the eye, are shown up by this method. Moraine, the girl you see here, was a sales girl with no previous factory experience. Now she's one of the very few women in the country trained to do this job. A boyfriend in the army gives her extra incentive to do it well. To show how completely women have worked into the manufacturing program of this plant, take a look at this small part. It's a part that requires 24 different operations to complete. But the remarkable thing is, every one of those 24 operations is performed by women workers. That even includes the original forging. This was considered strictly a man's job. But Grace has been doing the work for several weeks, and how she likes it. The only kind of work she did before coming here was housework. On a physically hard job like this, a strong, well-built girl is needed. Let's see you give it a good one, Grace. Here's a woman welder doing an exacting job of atomic hydrogen welding. Patricia took an eight months NYA welding course, and now there isn't a welding job in the plant she can't handle. There are lots more like her too, and more being trained right along. In assembly, too, women have the patience and the conscientious attention to detail so vitally needed for this important work. In final testing, each unit is given a 30-minute trial run under exactly the same conditions encountered in flight. Girls like these set up the test machines, run the controls, keep the records. So careful has been the workmanship of women workers that to date not one unit has been rejected in this final inspection stage. In the last step, the completed superchargers are wrapped in moisture-resisting paper. The packing girls, working as a team, use stapling tools to fasten the paper coverings. They enclose the unit in a shipping crate, a wood box they have previously stenciled with shipping marks. Then off the units go to the American Air Forces for use on warplanes all over the world. Except for the power plant, women work everywhere. They work on all types of machines, with the rare exception of those which demand unusually heavy lifting or reaching. Good working conditions should be maintained. Fluorescent lights help make fine, accurate work easier, help relieve possible eye strain. Tired feet are a main cause of body fatigue in women. This floor, made of creosote wood blocks, helps solve this problem. Several canteen wagons are located throughout the plant to give all workers a chance to buy hot and cold drinks sandwiches, candy bars, and cigarettes. At noontime, the canteen wagons provide the employees with items to augment lunches brought from home. Women employees work in three shifts of eight hours each, with a half hour for lunch. They are given two 15-minute rest periods for which they are paid. The women are permitted to smoke at their machines or elsewhere under the same conditions and rules as men. Efficient plant management will give special attention to health and comfort measures for women employees. And at the end of the day, they want to become strictly feminine again. Clean locker rooms are provided with wash fountains, chairs, and lounges. Toilets are kept immaculately clean. They are continually under the supervision of matrons. The matrons also accomplish wonders in keeping up morale. Girls have troubles. It isn't necessary to cater to those troubles. It's merely necessary to recognize them and provide intelligent, likable, friendly women to help and advise the girls. Safety is an extremely important factor in taking care of new women workers. A staff of nurses provides round-the-clock hospital service for all three shifts. As you probably have noticed, every woman employee is required to wear safety goggles at all times when working. As a result of this rule, there has not been a single serious case of eye injury in the plant since it opened. As a matter of fact, safety records show that they have only half the accident rate of the men in the plant. They are given every possible protection by the management and they are thoroughly instructed in safety rules and practices before starting to work. 
ample shower rooms are provided with hot and cold water, tile floors, and everything as neat as in a home. Bathing suits, of course, are not ordinarily worn in the shower room. Out of several thousand employees in this plant, 80% are women. These women are filling America's urgent need for skilled labor. They are more than fulfilling the management's expectations for this Alice Chalmers supercharger plant, only a few months old, is already weeks ahead of schedule. intricate jobs, hands working for America, women's hands. From machining to shipping, women have so efficiently played the dominant role in making this turbo supercharger that American aviators today are able to fly higher and faster than their enemies. These girls are proud to have a share in making possible aircraft performance unequaled anywhere in the world. Woman power comes through for victory.